So this is a diagnosis and imaging of thoracoabdominal aneurysms and also abdominal aortic aneurysms. Uh, so in 1953, DeBakey performed the first successful removal and graft replacement of a fusiform aneurysm of the thoracic aorta. It was uh, first published in 1955. So an aneurysm, so actually we kind of went over this mostly in the last talk, but 50% increase over the normal aortic diameter evolves all three layers, the insula media and adventitia. So a fusiform aneurysm is essentially a uniform dilation of the entire aorta. And then sacular is give a focal or outpouching. And then a false aneurysm or a pseudoaneurysm is essentially a collection of blood outside of the wall contained within the connective tissue. Uh, so the incidence is six in 10 cases, six to 10 cases per 100,000. Uh, six to seven decade of life is often what's most seen. It's more common in men, which is two to four times. Hypertension is uh, one of the major risk factors along with smoking. 13% have multiple aneurysms, and 20 to 25% are associated with abdominal aortic aneurysms. So etiology and pathogenesis, medial degeneration, arterial sclerosis, uh, it does run in families about 20 to 30%. Connective tissue disorders uh, are also resulting in aneurysm formation, Marfan's, Louis Dite syndrome, and also either Danlos. So again, the pathogenesis is a lasting fragmentation. There's increased fibrosis and collagen content. There's also increased inflammatory infiltrates. Uh, you see elevated MMPs 1 and 9, and also reduced wall strength. Subsequent aortic dilation, and then in contrast, you have intimal thickening and arterial sclerosis. So this is what a normal aortic wall looks like with the, the media. On the bottom part of the picture, you have the adventitia with the, the blood vessels. I guess this picture didn't come up so well. <laughs> so this is, again, with cystic medial necrosis. Uh, and this is uh, just a high focus shot of the uh, damaged intima, or the media. I want to just kind of skip ahead and just go to the, since it's talked about diagnosis and imaging, uh, most of your options are a CT angiogram. You can use an MRA. Uh, newer imaging modalities include dynamic MRA and also dynamic CTs, uh, which are very helpful for dissections to kind of help you find out fenestrations and flow patterns to help better plan. Uh, the IVIS, as we showed you yesterday, is also very helpful uh, in maintaining true lumen access to kind of give you confirmation of, of true lumen versus false lumen. Also, you can see the fenestrations and kind of help for intraoperative planning. Uh, selective aerotography is good, and TE is also, again, very helpful for uh, intraoperative planning. Uh, the downside to aerotography is, again, if, as a primary modality for diagnosis, is it's difficult to identify actual the true lumen size because you can't see, you can only see the flow lumen, you can't see the actual wall of the vessel. Uh, I think most people would say that CTA is probably the most commonly used modality, uh, multi vector helical scanner, you got better imaging quality, uh, fast image acquisition, and you have rapid reconstruction displays. Uh, it gives you great information regarding the size, wall morphology, is there a classification, is there plaque? You can see there's a dissection, intraluminal thrombus. It also helps you identify angulation, tortuosity, and then also you can also see the other anatomy associated with the patency and disease in the branch vessels. I'm not sure what happened to this one either. This is just a reconstruction of a CTA. Uh, not a very good image, but it kind of gives you what you can get, the CTs and the better imaging quality for preoperative purposes, especially as cases get more complicated with fenestrated devices. And branching really helps you pre-plan a case, which is the bulk of what you need to do. It's just a Crawford's classification, uh, which kind of also helps you determine uh, what the operation needs to be and the extent of the operation. And also the extent of the aneurysm will also determine you know, how well the patient's going to do in the post-operative period. So essentially, in summary, uh, most are often asymptomatic and found uh, incidentally looking for something else. Uh, the extent of the disease, the Crawford classification, will be the best predictor of complications and also the suitability for endovascular repair. Thank you.